diamonds in the rough. NFL Draft Diamonds. Time to shine. Hi, my name is Jimmy Williams with NFL Draft Diamonds, and I am here with a diamond in the rough. Uh, His name is Cole Merlin. He's a linebacker out of Siena Heights. Uh, Nice to have you on, buddy. Thank you for having me on, Jimmy. It's a true pleasure. Cool. So um, for people who don't know, um, where exactly is Siena Heights, man? I mean, I know it's an NAIA school, but tell us a little bit about that uh, school. It's about... I'd say 50 minutes northwest of Toledo, Ohio. I'm sure some people know where Toledo is. And Siena Heights is a smaller school, um, but I love it here. And I would not trade it for the memories that I have made with teammates and coaches. Cool. So again, a a school that not a lot of people know, but um, to be quite honest with you, that doesn't mean uh, that much to me because I feel like you are one of these guys um, who could be a diamond in the rough, who a lot of, you know, NFL teams have their eyes set on, um, and, and a guy who might have the opportunity um, to play um, at the next level. But um, uh, go ahead and kind of set us up a little bit. Give me like uh, your overall background, if you don't mind. So I'm originally from Solano, Ohio. It's a small farm town. I grew up on a farm um, throughout school. Um, I played three sports. I played football, basketball, and baseball. Then my senior year, I quit baseball to run track to get faster for football. Then throughout like the recruiting process, Siena Heights was kind of on my back burner. I'm not going to lie at first. You know, I was really shooting for Toledo or Youngstown State University. And when I went on those visits, I just felt like a number there. The facilities were awesome. Loved it. And I came to Siena Heights and I fell in love with it. And I would not trade it for uh, anything in the world with the memories that I've made education that I've gotten here yeah so um tell us a little bit more about Siena Heights man I mean uh, you've already talked about it a little bit but um uh, what, what makes that uh, institution so special for you so whenever I came on campus like whenever I visited other schools I just like I said earlier I felt like a number you're just there whenever I stepped on campus coaches coaches came outside and actually shook my parents hands which I'm a big family guy that's what my life is made of shaped around and we got there um even the players were just so welcoming instantly I was just like wow this is a true brotherhood and as soon as I stepped on campus like even before I walked around saw the football facility saw the weight room I'm like this is my future home cool cool well I mean I know every now and then I think part of the reason why people um you know go to maybe a, a, a smaller school like Siena Heights is to get some playing time. I mean, I know, I think that that's kind of the whole uh, point. I mean, some people don't necessarily want a red shirt um, or anything of that sort, but you, uh, you got there, man, you, you, you hit the ground running and um, haven't really, you know, taken your foot off the gas. So um, why don't you go ahead and talk to me about your uh, defense there at Siena Heights. So my defense, since my, it's pretty cool. The defense is a lot of the freshmen, actually, on the defensive side. We took pride. As soon as we stepped on camp, we were like, we're going to play. We had that mindset from the start with special teams, and that's where we started all together. And we had that mindset of, you know, special teams is just another unit on the team. It's just as important. And that carried on to the defensive side, that mindset. And what I love about our defense here at Siena, we're pretty old. We've stuck together for a while. A lot of us are 50 years, and some of us are even six years, which is cool. We've been playing together for a while. And we just have that mindset where we bend, but we don't break, you know. We run to the ball. All 11 guys are on the camera whenever we're making a tackle. No one's making a tackle solo. We're always pushing the pile back. We just have that hard nose mentality where we're not going to get beaten. We're not going to be out physical. So, which I love because that's just who we are. Yeah. And I mean, obviously I would introduced you as a linebacker. I mean, a guy who's in on a lot of those plays. I mean, uh, I, I know um, at least last season you were in all American um, you've had a crap ton of tackles over the past few seasons. So um, how do you fit into that uh, defense there overall? So first off, 
a lot of the D linemen are actually six years coming up, and they make my world so easy. They they're studs up there. So I'll give I give all my credit to them up front because they're fighting and crawling, they're grabbing. You know, Jersey's not for the offensive lineman not to come to the second level where I am, and. I just love it because that makes my job easy. I can flow. I can read, you know, and just game planning also helps me. You know, I didn't, when I was younger, I really didn't, you know, game plan as much, you know, but now that I'm older, I understand how important film is and everything. And that helps me think quickly while I'm on defense, just play. I don't think when I'm out there, you know. Gotcha. Um, I know you've hesitated on it a little bit. I mean, t- talking about some of your teammates, um, go ahead and blurt some names out, dude. Who do we really need to know there? So on the offensive side, um, Caleb Jefferson, he's just, I love it. He kind of has the defensive m- mentality that we have as he refuses to be taken down. You know, he sees the field so well and that helps us during practice on defense. You know, it makes, cause I don't think any other running back is like him. So practicing against him every day, it makes our jobs easy whenever it comes Saturdays. But on the D-line, we have Vinny Walker up front, so Tango Reynolds, um, Jacob Letterman. It's just – you have to see them in the weight room. We have Tone. I mean, they're, they're pushing 565 on bench, um, Jacob Letterman is. And, yeah, it's awesome having them in front of me, you know. But um, one of my saints is outside linebackers is Drew McGoyan. His football IQ is just insane. He's calling out plays whenever we're out there. And I give all of my credit to him as well because he makes my job easy. He calls out different plays and you can kind of cheat it a little bit, you know? Well, hey, man, uh, nice to give a a shout out to some of those guys. I mean, um, I know when I sat down, I sat down with uh, one of your coaches a while back ago and he was, and I was mainly talking to him about a guy who came out last season and y'all's former safety um, but, uh, but he was telling me, um, you know, this guy, Cole Merlin, um, he's coming up and everyone's going to have to know his name. Um, what do you feel separates you as a linebacker, dude? I mean, is it that preparation like you were talking about? What do you feel is like one of your best attributes? I say my probably is my, you know, just, I refuse. I love the one on ones. You know, I refuse to shed the blocks. I refuse to be beaten um film study is huge you know you even like you can just tell from offensive linemen the guard is his hand in the dirt or is it not is he pulling you know is he going to drop back in a pass I mean film study that's just I really wish everyone would understand how much preparation goes into film study because it makes your games on Saturday so much easier but me as a linebacker I'd say just like obviously refusing to be beaten um my tackles. That's what I would say. Gotcha. Another thing that I know a lot of people have um, praised you for um, is your character and your leadership. I mean, you've been a team captain there for a while. Um, Talk to me about you as a leader of of your uh, defense there. Not only do I like being, you know, verbal, but I like being, watch, having the younger guys show, um, watch me like, how do I, what's, what type of heart do I have? You know, what are the actions that I produce? And I'm majoring in special education. So I'm a leader in the, in my field as well. So I carry that onto our field, our football field. And I just really take pride in being a leader because I was a younger guy at once. I wanted to look up to someone and be like, I want to be like them one day. Interesting. So um, since you mentioned it there, you said you were a special ed major, um, you know, really involved in, uh, in, in some academics. So um, anything else there about, you know, you uh, as a student that you want to uh, talk about? I mean, are you involved in anything else there? So I have um, volunteered for the Special Olympics, which obviously I'm an athlete which I thought was awesome because those kids with special needs, people would be like, they just overlook them all the time, you know, and they are competitors. It was awesome seeing they hated losing, which I hate losing. So it was so cool. And they take pride in what they do. And I know people just look at them, just be like, Oh, they don't have any abilities, but they really do. And I was um, in my younger years at school, 
I was involved in TEACH. It's a program that helps out the community here in Adrian. Then football kind of got busier and I had to be out in the classroom a little more. So I had to step away from that. So. Gotcha. Um, so obviously you've been at Siena Heights now for a few, for a few years, um, created some great memories, uh, some of which you've already shared, but um, what's been that, what's that one moment yet? I mean, obviously we still got one more year to go, but um, what's that one moment at, to date uh, that's been your best so far? My sophomore year, it was home. Um, I had a pick six and it was going to our scoreboard. You had to see our defense block. It was like Christmas morning opening up presents. They found, I guarantee there was probably three people got depleted on that play. And it wasn't even just like me catching it, you know. Us celebrating as one unit in the end zone, oh, that was the best feeling ever. I will never, ever forget that. And I'll be telling my grandkids that one day. Awesome. So getting a pick six. So um, hopefully we'll get a few more of those moments this season. Um, some pick sixes, some fumble recoveries. Um, we'll see, man. I mean, definitely um, definitely a, a, a person, a player who I feel, at least at the NAIA level, probably one of the best prospects coming out of the NAIA this season. Um, cer certainly up there amongst the top linebackers there for sure. So um, what are your expectations uh, this season for, um, uh, for Siena Heights football? Take it day by day. That's how I look at it. You know, you have to prepare every single day like it's your last. You never know when it's going to be your last. So take full advantage of it. That's how I said. That's what I think of. But obviously, I want to win a conference. Obviously, I want to win a natty. But defensively, I want to be the top defense in the nation. Past couple of years, we've been the top five defense. And I don't think that's good enough. I want to be number one. There's no reason for it because we're old on the defensive side and we all have a great mindset and I feel like we're all buying in and it was a great summer. Interesting. Um, so uh, just to take, take a moment to, um, I guess, reflect a little bit. I mean, if, if you can maybe go back to your high school self, give him a little bit of advice, uh, prepare him for his collegiate journey there. Uh, what sort of advice would you give that little kid? So I played basketball, great memories in basketball. I had the body of a wrestler. I wish I would have wrestled because I told a couple of high schoolers this back in the day. I mean, what wrestling does, it carries right over to football. You know, I really wish I would have. I was a pretty good baseball player. I mean, I, going into my senior year, I was preseason all state, but I quit to get faster for um, football. And I truly do wish um, I would have ran track because – I mean, first off, it's competitive, you know. It's you against the other guy who's going to win. And it just made me so much faster. My running mechanics for football, for football. But also was I took the weight room serious, but I don't know if I was doing the right things. You know, I was in there all the time, but was I doing the right movements? Was I buying in 110% every single day? But so that's what I would tell myself back in the day is, Go even harder, you know, go harder. Your sure. future self, oh, thank you. Sure. So, um, I mean, obviously um, you've uh, gone through, uh, I don't know, this this whole process. I mean, you know, coming out of high school, get, you know, playing there for Siena Heights, um, uh, you know, gone through this, um, I don't know, uh, development process. Um, and so walk me through that just a little bit. I mean, I know that there have been a lot of coaches that have poured into you a little bit over the years. Um, how, how did some of that come about? So you're talking about physically, I'm sorry? Like physically and then uh, mentally, like who are the people that are really motivating you the most? So Coach Thornblade was my linebackers coach. And as soon as I've stepped foot on campus, that guy has given me 110% every single day. He still calls me. He's not a linebacker coach anymore. He had to step away due to kids and everything, which I respect. And that guy has showed me ins and outs of football that I wish I'd have known in high school because in high school, that would have been so much easier, you know. And I came in at 195 pounds, and that guy, he believed in me since day one, you know. Now I'm 240, and he always preached to me, weight room, Cole, weight room, Cole, eat, Cole, eat, Cole. 
And I just give all my credit to him developing me, making me the person I am today. And not only was he just worried about football, he was worried about my academics. Every Friday we would go in and we'd have academic check. And he would sit down with me and talk about school, talk about life. He could relate to me. I could relate to him a lot just from what he's been through. And I give all my credit to Coach Thornblade. Interesting. So now we're looking at a 240-pound linebacker, um, somewhere between 6'1 and 6'2, some decent size there. So, I mean, uh, certainly nothing to frown upon there for sure. So a guy who um going to be patrolling the middle, I, I would imagine. I mean, that's more or less where you're lining up right there in the middle. Yeah, in the middle. And actually, just depending game plan, you know, as you can tell from um, game planning, certain teams, um, certain down and distances, I might go to the outside. Gotcha. So, so, um, so more than likely, um, as you know, you're looking to make the transition to the next level, um, m- most likely a, a, a guy to, you know, play there in the middle, um, maybe to play some will, um, depending yeah. on the circumstances, but I mean, certainly a guy who could do that, um, if called upon. So, um, buddy, uh, we've, we've talked all this time about some football. want to take a moment to, um, uh, step away from that a little bit, talk about some things that aren't football. So, uh, let's talk about, uh, Mr. Cole Merlin and uh, who he is uh, outside of football. Go, go for it. Tell me something. So outside of football is um, I work on a farm. We have a farm at home. We have about 7,000 pigs, and we just got out of the cattle business. So in my free time, I grew up working. You know, I hate sitting down watching TV. I always have to be doing something. I don't know why. Just I cannot sit down and watch TV. But other than that is I'm a big family oriented guy. I do everything with my family. I will do anything for them. My grandparents live right next door. My dad's side is I about go see them every single day. Then my mom's side, they live in town a little further, but I try and see them at least once a week. So I love spending time with them, learning from them, you know, from their past experiences. And I would say- Family is my number one thing. So we get a farm boy who um, maybe doesn't know how to stop working. Um, well, even that night, mom's had to stop me from, I help pour concrete as well and do landscaping. And this past summer, she goes, it's time for you to stop doing that and focus a little more on football at night too. So this past summer, I stopped doing that and I dedicated all of that to football. Well, hey, I mean, at the very least, we know you're active and in shape. Um, because I mean, um, farm boys, they stay in shape, um, and obviously be eating a whole lot. So, um, uh, what's that one meal? Maybe if, if it's your mom's cooking or or whatever, but, um, what's that one, uh, you know, meal that you, you, you like these days? (laughs) This is weird. I eat this all the time. I eat noodles with Alfredo sauce and with, um, rice and chicken on top with ranch. I love it. Cool. Uh, so, um, uh, if you, you said that you're, you're on a farm there. So, I mean, is there anything close to you at all? Like, um, what's, uh, you know, what is your hometown like at all? I mean, is there any place that we would go to besides like, you know, the field in your backyard? Yeah. So actually we have a lake probably about a mile East of us. Um, it's a big lake. It's one of the, I think it's the biggest man-made lake in Ohio. Um, they run a marathon around it. So that gives you a perspective of how big it is. So we do spend a lot of time out in the lake Dad just got a boat. So, which is a lot more family time. So, which is really cool. 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 Um, all right, bud. Well, um, as we try our best to wind down this interview, I do want to give you one last opportunity to, um, maybe talk to some scouts. I mean, I know that there have been some scouts over the past couple of years that have, um, you know, been to your campus, uh, seen you play, Um, and, um, maybe, I just want to give you a chance to talk to those who you haven't yet. So, um, go ahead, look into that camera, uh, talk to those people and tell them what kind of a player they'd be getting if they took a chance on you. So, um, hit, hit all those guys with your pitch. So one thing that I would say about my pitch is, um, you're going to get a kid willing to do anything and everything to help the team, whether that's dirty work or easy work, it doesn't matter. Um, growing up on a farm I've done it all Um, I refuse to be outworked Um, I'm always trying to better myself and all the others around me I just don't want to make myself better I want to make others better as well whether that's players coaches athletic training 
anyone. Um, I'm always willing to learn new schemes. Um, I'm a lifelong learner, definitely with education. That's how it is. Um, I love playing special teams. I take pride in special teams. I play gunner. I play kickoff. I'm trying to get on punt return at corner, but we'll see if coach lets me. Um, yeah. I love to work. I love to lead, um, or that's verbally or just by my actions of what's in my heart. And what I really like to do is bring the energy because I feed off other people's energy and I want to reciprocate that. And I want to bring the energy for them. Gotcha. Well, I mean, definitely a player who I felt a lot of people need to know. Um, everybody really needs to know who Cole Merlin is. Um, and not only has, is he an excellent leader, a player, a great character off the field as well. So um, uh, definitely pay attention to Cole Merlin this season. So uh, wish you best of luck. All right, buddy. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for having me on as well. Sure. You take care then. Thank you, you too.